Um, I, I appreciate all the kind words um, from the county executive and, and uh, council president and the state's attorney. But let me give you a, a, a civics lesson here. A, a police chief has three responsibilities, to hire the right people, to invest in their training, give them the resources they need to do the job, and then hold the people accountable for doing their job. And make no mistake, the, the men and women of this police department, the patrol officers uh, uh, pushing that cruiser around every day, the detectives who are investigating the cases, the supervisors that are making sure officers are, and, and detectives are doing their job, they're the ones that deserve the credit um, for the superior law enforcement and, and service to the public that goes on here every day. And I'm, I'm privile privileged to serve with them. Um, I, I want to talk uh, a little bit about um, uh, why I think that the, our crime rate uh, went down so, so much over the past year and has gone down um, so much over the past several years. Uh, there's a lot of factors involved, and I think anybody that studies uh, the root causes of crime could tell you that um, when you look at um, uh, education levels, when you look at population density, you look at the levels of poverty, you look at um, a, a host of, of factors, um, they all play into um, uh, crime rates. And when you look at the investments that Montgomery County has made in their school system, in, in uh, crime prevention, in uh, 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 addressing mental illness and, and other things like that, you start to see that this, this is not just about um, what the police department has done. I, I, I do think we play a critical role, and I'm going to talk about some specifics of, of things that we've done, but this is a really a comprehensive effort by the county to, uh, to address some of the root causes of crime, and I think we're really seeing uh, some, some great results with the investments that we're, uh, that we're making in education and, and the economic development of, of the county, and, and just um, uh, there's a, a host of things that support the work the police department's done. I think if, if I had to pick the, 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 the biggest uh, initiative that has assisted us in, in reducing crime in recent years, um, it's what we in, uh, within the police department call our sector plans. Um, what, uh, years ago, we identified um, uh, a very uh, specific trend about where crime occurs in Montgomery County. And you can look at some areas of the county, and there is little to no crime in those areas. You look at other areas of the county, and you see that there is a uh, that, that uh, uh, the crime rate is certainly much higher than we'd want it to be. And uh, we identified those specific areas of the county that had the highest crime rates, and we developed a strategy uh, tailored to those specific areas. And what was right for uh, some areas uh, uh, around White Oak and, and Silver Spring was, was, was not exactly the same as what we were going to try and accomplish in, in some of the areas around Wheaton. And what we're doing up in Germantown um, is not exactly the same as what we're doing uh, in some of the areas in, in Gaithersburg. Each sector plan uh, had a, uh, was tailored to address the, the issues that the community was, was dealing with in terms of crime and safety. And uh, one of the cornerstones of these sector plans was to increase the number of police officers working in those areas. And we started off with uh, a, really a pilot program, what we called the Ida Sector Plan, because the Ida Sector was the highest crime area in, in Montgomery County at the time. And um, the, uh, the county executive and the county council were able to give us additional resources that we specifically targeted those areas. That's where those officers were assigned. And we saw dramatic decreases in the crime rate, the violent crime rate and, and crime overall um, in that area. Um, so we knew that this was a, a strategy that, um, uh, that, that uh, had the potential to work not only in, in what was then the worst area of the county, but um, uh, it would work in other uh, areas where we were having higher crime rates as well. Um, so our sector plans, uh, we, we have now, and, and with, um, uh, we are now in, 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 the, in the final lap, if you will, of finishing up the sector plans for all of the areas that we had identified years ago as the higher crime areas. And I think it's going to make a, a tremendous difference in, in, in those particular neighborhoods and communities. Uh, we've also rebuilt our school resource officer program. Um, we, uh, uh, be, there was a time when, uh, unfortunately, the, the um, uh, 
uh, with, with some of the cuts that needed to be made countywide uh, in, in the budget due to the economic circumstances, um, we pulled back a little bit and, in fact, pulled back uh, more than a little bit on our school resource officer program. We knew at the time it wasn't something we wanted to do, but it was something that we unfortunately was one of those tough choices that we had to make. Uh, we have now rebuilt our school resource officer program so that we have a police officer in every single high school. And let me t say that it's not just the Montgomery County Police Department. When we talk about the, the, the impact and, uh, that uh, crime has and, and the um, uh, response to crime in Montgomery County, you're talking about all of public safety agencies that uh, work together as a team. And it's not just Montgomery County. It's the Sheriff's Department. It's Gaithersburg City, Rockville City, Tacoma Park. All of those agencies work seamlessly with us, our federal partners. Um, everybody contributes to that, uh, to that public safety effort in the county, and, and we're, we're very pleased that uh, we have that kind of relationship with these other law enforcement agencies, and it benefits the residents of, of Montgomery County. We, uh, uh, several years ago, we created uh, what we call the PCAT team, the Police Community Action Team. And it, were, uh, it, it began as one team, we expanded it to two, and this was a team of officers, it was a, a, a supervisors and, and a team of officers that would go where we were seeing spikes in crime. If we, if we had a, um, a, a rash of burglaries in the neighborhood, if we had um, you know, a, a spike in stolen cars in a particular area, the PCAT team would be dispatched and would work that area for a week, two weeks, a month, however long they needed to be there to address those, those spikes in crime. Again, a, a, a proven strategy that resulted in, um, in, in uh, an immediate response and immediate uh, uh, results in terms of arrests, in terms of preventing further crimes from occurring in those particular areas. So one of the decisions we made a couple years ago was that this PCAT team, which was a countywide unit and went all over the county, wouldn't it be great if every district commander of all of our six district, state, six district stations had one of those community action teams at their disposal so that the way, when they had a spike in crime in a particular neighborhood, they had a team of officers that they could immediately, didn't have any other responsibilities for calls for service, but they could immediately dispatch that team to, to address those spikes in crime. And uh, we have, uh, we, we're in the process of adding those DCAT, what we call the district community action teams, the DCAT teams, to every district station. We've got half of them done. We're going to finish that up, um, uh, uh, hopefully, um, in, in uh, the coming budget year. The, uh, but again, a, a proven strategy that has had a real impact in terms of, of decreasing our crime uh, numbers. A number of years ago, we started a, our own Comstat process. You know, Comstat was made famous in New York. Um, and the, the purpose of, of uh, Comstat meeting, which we have every Tuesday morning um, at, uh, at police headquarters, is to bring the district commanders in and hold them accountable for the crime and the, and the activity that's going on in their district. And we have the, we have the, the, the latest crime numbers, we have um, uh, uh, diagrams and maps of where crimes are occurring, and uh, every, mo every week these commanders need to come in and talk about what's going on in their district and what they're doing about it. This puts a, a, a great deal of pressure for the district commanders and the district stations to react, react quickly to spikes in crime and when we have increased activity in crime. And again, this I think has been, uh, 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 has been an effective strategy in terms of reacting quickly to, um, to, to crime issues that occur. There's little things that we do, and, and no pun intended. We uh, it, a couple of sta one station in particular started what they called the Petty Crimes Unit, and this was uh, you know uh, this was a uh, uh, just a, a small unit of a, a, a detective or two that would look at crimes like uh, bre uh, uh, folks that were breaking into cars and stealing stuff out of cars, you know things that typically didn't get a detective assigned to them. And um, we, we had one station that decided they were, had enough of these types of crimes, they were going to sign an, a, a detective to that. And this detective ended up making a, a fair number of arrests, and it, and it ended up they could see the, these t petty types of crimes, thefts from autos, started uh, going down in that district. Well, now other district commanders have decided that this petty crimes unit is a great idea. Again, a strategy that, that was uh, giving great results in one district station, we're now expanding it to additional district stations. It's a small thing, but it's one of those things that, that taken with everything else we're doing, keeps us heading in the right direction in terms of decreasing crime. Let's not lose sight of technology license plate readers, um, uh, the mobile uh, automated fingerprint uh, system that we have. 
all of these are crime fighting tools that have really helped us uh, combat, uh, uh, combat crime. Uh, you, you know, um, uh, John McCarthy mentions the fact that uh, stolen autos have gone down dramatically uh, over the last several years. Well, one of the reasons is uh, my cops are just driving around now, and with the license plate reader technology, uh, you know, if a car goes by that's been reported stolen, it pops right up there. This kind of technology has really helped us uh, identify um, uh, folks that, that are stealing cars and we're recovering more cars. Um, uh, you know, license plate readers help us with wanted people. If someone's got a uh, warrant for their arrest and or, or the owner of the car, the registered owner of the car, I mean, it'll pop up it'll uh, and uh, alert the officer when, when that vehicle goes by. Now, it's not to say that that's person, the one person driving the car, but again, it's a tool that helps us uh, fight crime. So technology has, um, has been a, a terrific um, uh, help as well. Finally, um, I, I have to tell you that there is not a police department in the United States of America that can do this job alone. In fact, if they don't have the help, the support, the trust of the public, they are not very effective. And in fact, we enjoy uh, great public support here in Montgomery County. And one of the uh, ways that we um, uh, continue to build that support is that we work directly with the community on these crime fighting initiatives. We're not out there doing it by ourselves. You know, you've got, there, there are some communities in this, in this country where witnesses and victims of crime won't come to court and testify. We don't have that problem here. People have confidence in the, in the, in the police department, they have confidence in the state's attorney's office, and people show up to help us fight crime. Um, we've got uh, great neighborhood watch organizations that are helping us every day be the eyes and ears of, of what's going on in this community. So the community support we have from the business community, homeowners associations, the faith community, we have partnerships with all of those folks in efforts to try and, and uh, combat crime, to prevent crime, and to help us uh, once a crime does occur. This kind of support, this, these kinds of partnerships ha are, are really, I think, what makes the big, big, big difference uh, in terms of when you compare the numbers in Montgomery County and why they might be actually even, you know, why they're better than, than the national average. I mean, crime's going down nationally, but crime in Montgomery County has been going down even more. And I think it's a lot of those effective partnerships that we have with the community that really gives us uh, th that advantage. And I'll just finish by, by uh, once again, um, thanking the men and women uh, of the Montgomery County Police Department, uh, the cops, the detectives, the civilians we have, the civilian support we have. Um, they, they are uh, truly part of the backbone of this police department, and um, it, it is a real team effort. And I couldn't work with uh, a better group of men and women. I'm so proud of them and the work they've done. And, and again, appreciate the support of uh, the county executive and the council, uh, great public safety partners with the sheriff, the, the municipal agencies, and the state's attorney's office. Um, and, uh, uh, but as I say, we all do it for one reason, and that's to, uh, to serve the community. And the fact that they give us back the support they give us, it just makes all the difference in the world. Thank you.